Batman is starting a new team. The events surrounding Eclipso taught him the value of second chances, and with Killer Frost and Lobo, Batman sets out to make a new Justice League. A different one, one made up of mortals, not gods. He begins recruiting, first with Black Canary, who will keep the team honest. Then he seeks out the Atom, but Ray Palmer is missing. At Lobo's insistence, they instead recruit a student of Dr. Palmer, Ryan Choi, who will serve as the new Atom. Their next recruit was a new hero named The Ray, who operates out of Vanity, Oregon. And finally, Batman brought on established hero Vixen to help hold everything together. The Dark Knight sets up the team in Happy Harbor of Rhode Island. He plans to make their headquarters here, using a place he calls the Sanctuary. It's not going to be easy, with new faces and those with a questionable past filling the team's ranks. They've got their work cut out for them, but they are here as a community of heroes. As the people defending their home. The Justice League watches up from above. It's not enough. They're going to show the world that heroes are just like them. That anyone can be a superhero. They are the Justice League of America. Ryan Choi and Caitlin Snow are setting up the team's headquarters. Ryan is surprised that Killer Frost is so adept at building a generator for the facility, but she tells him that before she became a metahuman, she was a scientist, and she still is. Meanwhile, in New York State, a portal opens. Lord Havoc and his people enter through it. Earth. And it's so much worse than they thought. He delivers a message out into the world. Havoc and his people watch their own home burn. So they've come here to save the world. Or else. In the sanctuary, Ryan and Caitlin set up the computers, only to immediately see reports of Havoc's attack. They contact Batman who gathers the team together, alarming the Ray who points out they've only just started out as a team. But there's no sense in dragging their heels. People are calling for help. Time to show them that someone is listening. Lord Havoc declares this planet is weak. They're not safe. Look how easily he and his people tore everything down. They cannot be trusted to protect themselves. Havoc's home was burned in the name of freedom. He will not let that happen here. Only a strong hand can bring safety and order. So take it. Take their protection and surrender to your new rulers. But Havoc is about to be disappointed. Rulers don't do well around here. The villain recognizes these heroes. He doesn't know them personally, but he knows their kind. The Thunderer, Machine Head, Frank Future. Those were the heroes of his home, and Havoc killed them all. And these strangers are next. Batman orders the Ray to set a perimeter, and he quickly transports the civilians to safety. The Dark Knight says this Lord Havoc attacked his people. Everyone on this planet is one of his people. And it's time Havoc find out just who these heroes really are. The Atom charges in, shrinking down but seriously freaked out about all of this. Batman didn't even want him on this team, this was all Lobo's crazy idea. But he calms down and focuses in on Havoc. He tries to find a breach in the villain's armor so he can take him down from the inside when Havoc electrifies his own suit. Shocked, the Atom returns to regular size and Lord Havoc grabs him. It seems that the people will need a demonstration of this Conqueror's power. But Batman refuses to let this happen. This is his team. If Havoc wants to make an example of someone, the Dark Knight offers himself up instead. Hello and welcome to Comic Island. My name is Arden and this is my recap and review of Justice League of America number one. Well ever since Justice League vs Suicide Squad, I've had my eye on this new team. It sounded like a cool idea with a really different roster than the average Justice League. Sure enough, it has paid off pretty nicely and I think it's a pretty cool start for this new series. 
I thought the art was well done and Steve Orlando did some solid work with balancing out all the different team members. I admit there are some barriers for entry for enjoying this issue. There's like three or four rebirth issues that sort of set up the various characters and goings on in this story, including the JLA rebirth issue, which I included some of the content here, but also rebirth issues for the Ray and the Adam, and a couple other characters. None of that makes for required reading, but it does make for informed reading. So if you're wondering about who the Ray or the Adam is in this story, you should probably check out those Rebirth comics. Otherwise, you should definitely check out the Rebirth comic for this series before starting on issue number one proper. There's also, randomly, a lot of references to multiversity in this issue, so knowing that story can kind of inform you a little bit here too. This all makes for quite a few challenges when it comes to starting with this comic itself. But as somebody who is more or less on track with all this stuff, it is pretty awesome, so I'm glad I read it. We're still early in this series, so I can't tell for sure yet, but so far this is a pretty awesome team-based comic and a fun story overall. We haven't talked much about Steve Orlando before on this channel, but I really do enjoy his writing. I'm curious to see how he does with the team setting though, I'm not sure if he's done that before. I hope he takes the time to give us a strong sense of how these heroes interact with each other, because a lot of these relationships are currently undefined, so I hope he does get into it a little bit. We get hints of what this team will be like with each other, but only time will tell if this is going to be fully explored. From those glimpses, things do look good. I like the dynamic and balanced nature of the team. We have Batman at the top, in a familiar role, but one that he's good at, and basically two established veterans working as sort of assistant coaches to help him out, Vixen and Black Canary. Then we have two newbies, the Ray and the Adam, and a criminal trying to do something a little better with her life in Killer Frost. Lobo is sort of the wild card, but also kind of in the same place as Caitlyn, a former criminal trying to do something a little different. But let's be real, Lobo is very much here out of his own sense of amusement more than anything else. If this series explores that, and explores it well, then man, this is going to be awesome. The only other element of this story worth mentioning is the rather amusing notion that we have this brand new Justice League team, and their first enemy they're going up against is Doctor Doom and a few other Marvel villains. Like literally, that's what Lord Havoc was in Multiversity, and though it's pretty clear this is a slightly different version of that character, he's still very much Doctor Doom. And I'm okay with that, because the idea of Batman and his friends squaring off against Doctor Doom and what looks like Magneto with a few acolytes sounds pretty damn cool to me. So it's weird and a little funny that DC's doing this, but yeah, I'm on board. If they don't mind, I certainly don't mind. And yeah, that's pretty much my final say on this comic. It's not the most accessible thing in the world, nor is everyone going to like this new series, but I thought it had a lot of fun ideas in play. Justice League of America number one is a nice blend of characters, new and old, all put in this brand new situation, and the series has set out to do some great stuff with them. So far, to me, it looks like an endless source of fun, offers a lot and potential, and I hope you check out this issue for yourself if you haven't already. Thanks for watching this video. Let me know what you thought of JLA number one in the comments section below. This was our awesome Patreon bonus review for the week, and I'm super glad this was the title that wound up winning. If you'd like to have a say in the comics we review, check out our Patreon page. And finally, don't forget to like, subscribe, and keep reading comics.